So through your work experience and your graduate work at University of California, Berkeley, mm -hmm. what have you learned about balancing education innovation with systematic implementation? I think it's about understanding not only where, understanding where um, all the players are at right now, and then also having a vision of where they need to where they need to be. Um, so, for example, um, systematic implementation could be um, a school goes into program improvement because of No Child Left Behind. They didn't meet adequate yearly progress, and so um, one of those. One of the stipulations for systematic implementation is that uh, schools must monitor progress of the students to see how they're going to do on the large scale assessments. Um, so in order to do that, that means they need to develop the assessments. Mm -hmm. They need to figure out how to use the data to to see if it's even making any sense. So, yeah. you know, how, what, you know, what sense can they make of the data to, to see whether or not they're monitoring progress. And they also need to figure out how to use the data to inform instruction. Yeah. So the educational innovation perspective from coming out of Berkeley is, <clears throat> it definitely is a Berkeley mantra, I think, in terms of from education, is we need to learn to use assessments as a lens to understand how students are thinking and not just as a lens to evaluate teachers or to evaluate how students are doing. So rather than as a, uh, rather than to look at assessment as a, a mastery learning experience, it's more of a diagnostic and a formative assessment. So one of the places I start with teachers, for example, in terms of the systematic implementation and bringing in the educational innovation <laughs> <laughs> is trying to figure out where, what they're comfortable with, what kind of data are they comfortable with and how much data can they handle in a one hour meeting, you know? We're gonna sit down, we're gonna have a data team meeting, and what's manageable to have a conversation about? I feel like the conversation should focus on what I need to teach tomorrow. Yeah. So it needs to be, you know, practical, uh, but it also needs to be innovative in the sense that you're looking at data in a whole new light. So you're not just, you know, looking at the percent of students who are proficient on the test because that's not gonna tell you what to do tomorrow. It just tells you you have some smart kids and some not so smart kids, but it doesn't tell you what to do with the not so smart kids. Right. Or, um, so the data that I share with the teachers is, um, you know, start, starting with a basic, the percent of students who answered A, B, C, and D on a multiple choice question, for example, and actually looking at the percent of students who answered incorrectly I try not to even show them the data right away. I have them kind of predict what they think students are going to choose. Right. Have them do a cognitive lab and think aloud as they solve the problem themselves. And then, and then they look at the data, and we call the data an attractive distractor. So, you know, what causes this item to be, this answer choice to be an attractive distra distractor? Yeah. So that's sort of a, a way into thinking of the innovation piece being using assessment as a lens to understand its own thinking, and the systematic piece is using assessment to uh, monitor progress towards student outcomes in the large-scale assessment to try to kind of marry those two ideas so that it really influences the classroom experience for students and influences how teachers understand how students are thinking.